Okay, so I was um, I didn't get to record this session in the uh, PowerShell Summit 2018 um, because it wasn't recorded by the conference and I forgot to record it from my iPhone. But I wanted to get something out there. I wanted to really capture this because because it was one of the um, one really one of the best talks I've ever done. One of the talks that I've enjoyed the most. I feel that has got the most uh, that has provided the most impact for um, for people. And I really wanted to do it and I really didn't want to. Uh, waste time getting home, so I'm going to be doing this presentation here in the airport um, as I'm getting ready to go home. So um, I hope they can help uh, a lot of people. So we'll go ahead and get started. So this course is this course. You can tell I've been doing too many plural site courses. Um, this um, this talk is about accelerating your career to others by proving you're a badass. And what that essentially means is that um, it's about getting involved in the community and how it can help you and others accelerate everyone's careers. So for this first slide, the Dalai Lama really has this awesome quote um, that I love that says, sharing your knowledge, it's a way to achieve immortality. At first I thought that, you know, this meant I didn't really understand what I meant. Like, how can I share my knowledge and live forever? You know, it doesn't really make sense. But it wasn't until I finally realized, well, sharing your knowledge, and when you share your knowledge, you're sharing a piece of yourself. You share a piece of yourself, um, you know, to others whenever you do that. And if others will share that same knowledge, others will share that same knowledge, you know, passed down from generation to generation, just like a family. You know, you teach your, uh, you know, you teach your son how to fish or, you know, teach your, your daughter how to, I don't know, to fish or to, to play Minecraft or, I don't know, something like that. Um and you can share that knowledge. You not only help yourself, you help your, um, you know, your your students, your proteges, your apprentices, your your kids, and it's a way to really just um, feel some kind of fulfillment by sharing your knowledge. That way, your you know, I mean, your for lack of a better word, your legacy can can live on. All right. So first and foremost, I want to talk about. All the excuses I've heard myself and many, many other people say whenever they try to say, well, I don't I, I, I don't get involved in the community. I don't get it. I don't share my knowledge that I have because of someone's already done it. Very, very common. Someone has ever already uh, wrote a blog post on how to create an Azure VM. Someone's ever already done, um, you know, done a. A, a podcast or a video or a course on, um, you know, how to do X, Y, Z in PowerShell. Someone's already done it. Someone, everything is out there. Let me, t I'll tell you from real world experience, I agree. Someone has already done just about everything that you can think of out there. I mean, it's the internet for God's sakes. But what you can provide is your context, your your story behind things. I'll get into that here in a little bit. Next one, it's not good enough. That whole self-confidence thing, that whole perfectionist syndrome. Perfectionism is the enemy of progress because you will never release something. You will never release something in a GitHub repo. You never release something in a PowerShell gallery. You never re release a piece of software because, oh, it's not good enough. You know, well, someone's already done this pretty well and, and I don't... Uh, you know, I don't need to do this. It, it, nobody will really like it. It's bullshit because everybody is good enough. You provide a unique perspective on so many different things. Somebody doing this um, this talk now was going to could do it ex, 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 extremely different way. You know, we all have stories and anecdotes and things and personality we can put into things. Next one is people will tell me I'm wrong. This is true. Unfortunately, there are plenty of haters out there, and there are plenty of people that will uh, that will want to just you know, bring you down. And um, you know, fortunately, in in the community that I am in, that's it's it's a rarity. You'll get so many more people thanking you for your work and thanking you for doing what you're doing, rather than um, dealing with the person that says, uh, "Well, you." I wouldn't do it that way, uh, or, or I would do it this way, or, um, oh, you made a typo here. Uh, you know, people will tell you, um, you know, you can tell that the people that are different, the understanding of, and, you know, the great people out there will tell you that, um, you know, 
offering you feedback rather than criticizing. This is this is um, a lot less of a, a, a problem than what you may think. And then finally, the, the the excuse that I think that I hate the worst out of everything is I don't have time. Think about that. I don't have time. Everybody has the same 24 hours in the day. It just you choose where to spend it. People that say I don't have time to do something are trying to get out of uh, feeling guilty for doing something. You know, wherever I come up, somebody and they tell me something about this great project that they're working on. And I say, well, did you blog about it? Well, I don't have time. Uh, it, it, that just eats at me when people say that, because that's fine if you're not going to do it because you choose to you know, do something else more interesting, do something with family, um, you know, sleep. Uh, but don't say I don't have time. Say I've chosen not to do that because I'm doing something else. You've prioritized something else. It's simply not in your priority. By putting the, the focus back on yourself and saying, well, blaming, you know, father time for this stuff, you blame yourself. You blame, you, you, uh, you know, you realize that, oh, I, I have made a conscious decision not to do this thing because, you know, then you think, well, why, do, why did I just say I don't have time? Well, you could say I don't have time because I did a, um, you know, I spent a, a vacation with my family. I chose not to do that because it's been a vacation with my family. You know, that's typically just, you know, just fine. You're, that's a completely legitimate way, reason why you're not giving back to the community and, you know, accelerating your career. But if you then realize, well, when you say I don't have time and, you know, you may, you're sitting watching Netflix, playing video games, um, you know, casually uh, browsing Reddit and, and getting into flame wars, then you, you, you kind of put that onus back on, on yourself and you're able to, um, to get, take more responsibility for your time. So for all of these, I say, just, just freaking stop. I mean, you, you do know things others don't you know. Like I said, I'll get into this a little bit in a, in a minute, but it's all about you, everybody, in this airport that I'm sitting in, everybody in the class, everybody in the, in the course, and everybody in the room that I did this presentation in, everybody knows something you don't. You know, um, you know we're talking like, you know, Jeffrey Snover, uh, the, the father of PowerShell. You know, I know some more things about PowerShell than Jeffrey Snover does. I'm sure all of you do. Everybody knows something, whether it be this big, huge, important piece feature, or it could be just a little bug or just a little nuance that, you know, um, somebody may, you know, may not realize, you know, you can have quote unquote experts in things. These experts are just the ones that typically know more than, than most others, but nobody can know everything. And you will help people. I hate this to where people think, well, nobody's going to like my stuff. You know, I'm just kind of, uh, Looking up, looking down, and oh shucks, no, but I'm just, you know, oh, I hate the, the, the just word. I'm just, you know, Joe Jones from Acme Corporation that nobody knows about me and nobody's wanting to do it. That's just get over it. Get over it. You will help people. Eventually, what you'll find is you'll do this more and more. You will help more people and more people. You'll get more comments and you'll feel awesome doing it. Honestly, um, here at the PowerShell Summit, I was blown away by the number of people that came up to me and said, thank you for what you do. Thank you so much for, you know, all your hard work and your help. It's honestly really, really great to hear. This is the, the probably the, the most important piece of this talk, thinking, saying you are unique. You know, anyone in the tech space um, in particular, you know, anyone can Google how to do food. I put here how to use get service in the PowerShell world how to um, create a Hyper-V virtual machine, how to, uh, um, you know, dig a hole. How you, can, you can make this as, as uh, kind of wide as you want, but anyone can Google that, how to do this, how to this, how to that. You know, if strictly, you know, you're not going to, if you're a coder, you could technically write a bunch of code, write a script, and just copy and paste it into a blog post. Here you go. That's not really... A, you know, that's, if it's better than nothing, true, but at the same time, that is not going to prove you. You are sharing, sure, that's a, it's a step, 
but you need to, to make your content unique. You need to write a, a story around your content. You need to put inject your own personality into your uh, into your content. People want to hear your story, your um, your unique unique perspective on things. Insert anecdotes here and there on saying, well, I did in this piece of code because oh, I found that um, you know this thing happened when he did this. I'm not for sure why, but and it's not in the documentation, but I did this. All that kind of um, industry knowledge that's not in documentation. You're, you know, there's plenty of documentation out there. You're not, you're not, you're not in charge of just replicating documentation. You're in charge. Of, people like to go to blogs instead of the documentation because it has feeling. It has, you know, grit behind it. It has, you know, real applicable experience. So you are unique. And you write a story. The whole point of this is just to write. Make your content specifically you. So, real honestly, you may think, well, what's the best that could happen? And what's the worst that could happen? You know, when you're making a decision, you you think these uh, two things. Well, just looking at this slide here, there is an enormous amount of upside to this. Um, in, the, in the talk, I talked about uh, building value, putting value in your, your bucket. You know, whenever you talk about um, uh, blogging, for example, a lot of people start blogging because it's just self-documentation. They're doing it because, you know, future self is going to forget what past self said, uh, you know, a year or two years ago. Um, and they they really want to, to document that stuff and to kind of get it out on, on, on paper, on, you know, on a blog or somewhere so they can refer back to it instead of having to recreate the wheel and think it over and over again. And another thing is it accelerates learning. You'll find that Whenever you start to teach people more and more and you, you, you write about it and you explain your, your problems and ideas and projects in a way that others can understand, for some reason, just the fact of speaking and then hearing yourself speak over and over again. Right now, like right now, I'm sitting in, a, in an airport and I've got a few people looking at me because they think that I'm, that I'm talking to myself. But I, I just I don't really don't care because... I know that just the act of speaking and talking and hearing myself is really helping me um, uh, get get better at what I do, get better at speaking, get better at better at these talks. It's accelerating uh, my learning. And one other thing that I wanted to to, to talk about was um, the kind of the whole putting value in the bucket sort of thing. Um, well, you'll see, whenever you do, you know, you contribute to the community like this, and I'll talk about how you can you can do that in a minute. It's I'm going to be talking about putting value in a bucket. So what I mean, what do I mean by that? Well, the best that could happen is you put all this value in, you, 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 you make a blog post, you do a, a help out with a user group, you help out, you do a session talk, you uh, do a podcast, you put out a YouTube video helping other people. All that, you may not think that it doesn't, um, it's not paying you anything, but it is. It's paying you in value, putting value in your bucket more and more and more. And the more you put in there, the more valuable you'll be when I say building your resume to, uh, you know, give you a, a prime example. I don't have a resume. I don't, um, the best job I've ever had, which I'll talk to um, in a minute in my story was I got, I got a job pretty much without an interview. I mean, they, they had seen my work. I was able to provide my GitHub uh, repos, my, all the, the articles that I've done. And it's clear that, you know, I know what I'm talking about, or I'm really good at, at BS, which is, you know, you never know. It's a little bit, it's a little bit, a little bit of both sometimes. But um, anyway, um, yeah, the best that could happen is a lot of great things. But what's the worst that could happen? You suck, you know. Oh, you, you're terrible. This goes back. People will say bad things about me. Um, this is what you're afraid of. You're afraid of the unknown. You're afraid people are going to say, well, um, uh, Adam did the, the, the Pester book thing, and I'm going to write something about Pester. Adam is going to come along and, and say I suck because, oh, he is the great, the, the great master sitting on high on a mountaintop. Just stop it. You, I heard this a, a lot in, in um, some of the talks. Like People say, well, um, oh, Jeffrey Snover is sitting in the, the talk in the front row. I'm so nervous. He's, you know, I'm so thinking he's going to see something wrong or, um, you know, uh, somebody, some expert, Don Jones is in there. Oh, he's going to tell me that, you know, I don't know what I'm talking about. You're, you're freaking out about something that is never going to happen. It may happen with a few assholes here and there. Let me, let me 
preface that is, it may happen a little bit, but for the most part, huge, far and away, if you are able to impact at least one or two people in your, uh, you know, in your talk, in your sharing, that's all that matters. Even if the very minute chance, it's like you, when you, when we worry about people that say you could suck, it's like you are, um, uh, you, you, you're, you're worrying about, um, you know, being, being eaten by a shark. You know, they, they talk about, well, th the chances of you or at airplane uh, here in the airport, an airplane crashing, you know, it's like the chances of that happening, you're more, more likely, much, much more likely to get hurt in a car accident than die in a plane crash. I mean, that's kind of what the thing is. You, you, you're worrying about something that will never, ever happen. Even when it happens, once you get that self-confidence confidence up, you'll realize that, um, you know, I, it doesn't matter. You know, I don't care because I've helped so many other people. One little comment is not going to change anything. So here, here, if you're not familiar with my my car talks uh, videos, this is this is kind of a project that I I've got uh, about 20 or 30 of these videos now that I decided that um, I have 30 minutes a day where I take my daughter to school um, once a day and uh, I have this time in the car to where I was just listening to a podcast you know listening to the radio doing what doing whatever. And I decided this is a great time to kind of do a uh, oh, kind of a grassroots thing, I suppose. I just wanted to get some content out there and talk about my ideas and talk about the, um, you know, the experiences that I had that it, in hopes that it may relate to some people. And, you know, this is a completely unedited, unscripted, pretty much unrehearsed, really unrehearsed. I just think of an idea and run with it. And you see that, you know, in this the title zero fucks given this is definitely true i just i don't have any fucks to give anymore because you can see that i'm in my sweet you know badass minivan with the back seat temperature controls there and you can immediately say oh this has got to be a minivan look how big this thing is and plus my my daughter's pink ipad in the back um to where you know that's just remnants of my my kid you know it's like i'm not a, a you're not this guru of gurus nobody is that everybody is real to some extent the uh, you know, the president of the United States, CEOs of companies, we're all real, we're all people, we're all in this together. And this car talks was a uh, sort of like twofold approach for me. I was, it was, it was meant to be a, um, you know, to provide people with some great content, to provide people with some great ideas and maybe ways to improve their career and their lives and all this stuff. But at the same time, I did it also in hopes of inspiring other people to kind of do the same, to kind of get out of their comfort zone. Because it, honestly, it's just me getting there, kind of sucking it up and, and talking about whatever. Sometimes I act like a total dork, and, and some people sometimes it actually makes some sense. Um, as long as I make some sense a little bit of the time, and I help just a few people, really, that's all that matters. So um, I'm not just I don't. I, I really think that it's really important to kind of prove myself in some of this because anybody on the internet can come up and say, um, anybody can come and say, well, uh, oh, you know, you get those 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 gurus say, I made a million dollars. Here's how you you can too. Um, you know, join this pyramid scheme or uh, do this, and uh, or they're selling this product or this program or a course or something when they have never actually done it themselves. I think it's important to kind of take a step back and to show you not in a not in a bragging way whatsoever if you know me if you ever met me as a person you know that i'm not a bragger i'm just like any you know it guy out there um any tech pro that just is i'm i'm very humble but at the same time i think i've gotten past that uh talking about myself and my my career and all my successes it hopes that some at least one other person can get there so this bitly link here is a is a post I did for a, a, a hit refresh um, article series. Microsoft, I'm a Microsoft MVP, and, and uh, um, they want to do something around Satya Nadella's hit refresh book whenever it came out. And they talked about what is your, you know, what ha what's, how has being a Microsoft MVP impacted your life? And this was a, a an infographic from that. It's a, 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 it's a graph of my yearly income starting all the way from I started in 1998 all the way to uh, well, it was 2017 at the time, it's 2018 now. And you can see that I started off in 1998 
with, I was making, gosh, I don't know, $6 an hour or something like that. And I, it just casually progressed, 3 5%. You may be familiar with this. And you're in a full-time mm -hmm. role, 3 5%. You know, you get, oh, you get 6%. Uh, increase because oh you did a great job Adam you're getting six percent extra money uh, per year you think oh that's just so great up all my other co-workers got maybe three four percent I got two percent extra which is like you know two thousand dollars a year more oh that's great I'm not I don't want to um, I don't want to say that you shouldn't be proud of that that's great if you are doing better than your co-workers you're getting more money because of it that is awesome but I also want to tell you that if you're able to get out and share and collaborate with the community, go to conferences, make these connections. Notice in 2015, 2015 I was making around $67,000 a year. Um, in a senior role, I was a Microsoft Assistance Consultant um, here in Indiana. Cost of living is pretty cheap, so I, I never really made a whole, whole ton of money. But notice in 2016 and 2017, and now in 2018, my the income skyrocketed. I mean, it what is it, uh, 60,000 all the way, it quadrupled almost. This is, this is my story. This, that happened because I, I, I was at a conference. I, first I got a salary, a, a new job that was double, over double what I was making before. I, and I was the only, one of the only remote, full-time remote employees in the company. I was able to get that position because I spoke up at conferences. I made connections with people. I was able to, um, Breakout. I was able to share information. People knew kind of my, my content and knew kind of what I what I did, and I was able to um, you know to speak up. And somebody said, "Well, hey, um, oh, we're looking for somebody with, with PowerShell. Um, why don't you you know talk to my boss? It was um, you know my my coworker now, and he, and he said, um, why don't you talk to my boss and see? The same day, exact same day, I was on the phone with his boss, which I found out that he was also a Microsoft MVP. He's like, this is great, you know." You're the PowerShell guy. We're looking for somebody exactly um, like you. And it wasn't, but gosh, I don't know, maybe just a couple weeks later, I flew over it to um, into California and then kind of had a talk with some of the people. It really wasn't even an interview. It's like, hey, what are you doing? Oh, yeah, okay, what do you – it was kind of like a – you know, kind of had to go through an, an interview process but I could tell, and and my my boss at the time has said, this I do. We just need you to come in and talk to some people, and just kind of get a feel for who you are and everything. There wasn't any technical, there wasn't any any technical questions, anything like that, because all that I've proven all that stuff already. So that that's what got me to um, to 150, 170 range because of the, just that job, and then that would that could have been a great success altogether. I could have stopped there. And um, would have been been happy, and that would have been completely fine. But this is where you know this is me, my personal experience. I this is my personal attitude. I I take take things to extremes sometimes, and I say, well, you know what? Since I'm getting so much traction in the community, I'm helping so many people, and at the same time, look at this, I'm helping myself tr tremendously financially. I'm just going to take this to the next level. So like, oh, I like writing. So I started um, more blogging. I started writing on lots of different sites. I started doing plural site courses. I started doing courses for myself. And that's what got me to, uh, you know, around the 260 mark in 2017. And actually, as of last week, my accountant just got back to me and got my taxes done. Um, and he said, Adam, you have made $269,000 this, uh, you know, this year. And I thought, you know, coming from someone that has made, you know, 30 to 70,000 more than less than $70,000 previously 2015 I still can't I still can't fathom the um, you know the financial success I've had you know $269,000 in a year is an astronomical amount of money for me and I don't say these exact again I don't say these exact numbers I don't want you to get one thing I'm really concerned about is, you know, you think, oh, Adam is just saying how much money he needs. Money, he says, just because he's bragging. I do not want you to think about that at all. I want you to, I want to be completely transparent, completely clear on my experience. Because, you know, just like they, they say, your, your mileage may vary in these situations. You know, you, you may not make $269,000. You may make a half million dollars. You may make it. The financial success doesn't matter. 
All that matters is that you are happy and you are able to provide for yourself and your family and be comfortable. So that's kind of my, my story. And I wanted to kind of give you that example of my specific story to make you realize that if you get involved and you get out, put yourself out there and share the knowledge that you have, you too can be like this. You can, you can be much more successful than I am if you want to, you know, take it to that level or you could just, you know, get an awesome job like, um, you know, like Josh Duff, Duffney did. He does some blog posts which I, I'm, I'll try to link to and where his, his salary doubled as well. I've heard countless stories. If you were in the talk, I've heard countless stories of people uh, doubling, tripling their salary because of their PowerShell skills and just because they got involved. So how do you actually, you know, do this? When I say get involved in the community, what does that actually mean? Well, there's a lot of different ways to do that. Um, the, the easiest way is to get started is probably blogging. Um, you know, blogs are free. You can start a WordPress blog. You can start a Google blog. You can start uh, lots of different ways to start blogging. It's all about um, blogging is all about documenting what you've done at work, documenting what you've done in life, just the, the skills that you learned over time and being able to write a blog post about that, write an article, uh, any, anything. Like, there's so many different mediums out there that you can write for that are, that, that are free. Once you do that, you can then, once you kind of get into that, uh, that repetition and the habit, it's all about that habit, then you can start looking at other things. You know, do, you, um, do you enjoy blogging? Well, just keep blogging. Do you enjoy um, you know, speaking to other people? Do user groups. Um, submit talks for for um, you know for conferences like the PowerShell Summit and any there's hundreds and hundreds of conferences that you can talk at. Freelance writing is a, is a venue that I went to um, because I was blogging and um, you know I was providing value to my my my, my customers, my readers, um, and I was building value. But at the same time, you know I'm not getting paid to do that, and I kind of had to offset my, uh, you know, my free stuff with some paid stuff to, you know, to pay the bills. So I decided to do freelance writing, writing for lots of different, um, you know, sites out there like InfoWorld, CIO, MCP Mag, Forces Ops. There's a lot of different places out there that will, that will really like your content because your content brings readers to their site. And there's a lot of different things. Plural site training courses, another one, Udemy training courses, screencasts. If you like doing screencasts like this, um, if you like doing, if you want to get started and don't really want to go out on the internet as a whole, you can do something like uh, lunch learns, brown bag lunches at work. You know, you have a, um, a regular time every now and then, and it's kind of get up in front of your coworkers and talk about whatever you learn. Podcasts; these are all great ways um, to get started. There's so many different ways out there to, uh, you know, to really provide that that content that you need. Okay, at this point in the um, in my talk, it was just about um, sharing, um, you know, getting questions for me. And one thing, one of the pieces that were that I did in the original talk was about sharing your success stories. This is one thing that Michael Bender he um, he came up, um, he talked about how uh, how he was able to get his dream job from uh, getting in the community, becoming a Microsoft MVP, and then from that, Thomas Rayner came up, another Microsoft MVP, told him about kind of his success story. And then there was at least five or six people um, in the uh, in the talk that came up and said, because I uh, because I did this, because I started blogging, because I shared a PowerShell script. Uh, Kevin Marquette, um, hopefully, he's going to become a Microsoft MVP soon. We'll see. Um, he was he was said, I've made incremental changes, not only three, four, five percent. I was able to do twenty percent, thirty-seven percent, you know, fifty percent. These big, big financial jumps. Just because he was doing things for free, providing community, he focused more on his blog and focused more on helping people. There were so many people, at least, I mean, eight people, and there was only 25 people in the room that said, that gave me example, real examples of, I did this, I decided to give back, I decided to help other people, I decided to start blogging or, you know, or just getting, doing a user group talk, just getting myself known, making other people know that I know my shit, you know, to, to realizing that 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 got brought up opportunities that it did not have before. I, I really, really wish I would have recorded that. I love those success stories, and I may try to do some interviews or something of, of people at, at some time and maybe do a series or something of those success stories that people have had. But, um, so 
thank you. I wanted to, to really thanks if you uh, have stepped, stay tuned for uh, kept up with this recording of the session I did at the PowerShell Summit 2018. I really appreciate it. Um, if you want to reach out to me in, in, in any way whatsoever, talk about this or really talk about anything you like, I'm uh, available at adamtheautomator.com. Uh, that's my blog where I have I do uh, a lot of different things. A.D. Bertram is on Twitter. I'm on Twitter quite a bit. That's probably the best way for you to get a hold of me. And I'm on LinkedIn um, at um, Adam Bertram. Um, I appreciate you taking the time to uh, to talk and, or to hear me, hear me talk about this stuff. And, and hopefully it's inspired you to get started if you haven't already. And hopefully it's given you a kick in the ass to, you know, to really up your game if you uh, if you've already started, but you're, uh, you know, maybe you're slacking off a little bit.